Hello folks. In this video, I'm going to review the Laser Packer 4, which is the world's first portable dual laser engraving machine. In the box, we have the base plate, a cutting platform, sample material and a ruler, the slide extension, the platform for the slide extension, the electric stand, the chuck rotary, the laser module, accessories for the rotary, safety goggles, the riser add-on, a power adapter, a toolkit, the magnetic safety cover, and the instruction manuals. Assembling the engraver and accessories only takes a couple of minutes, each requiring just a few screws to fasten together and then they're ready to go to work. The electric stand has a bracket for mounting the laser module, which can be adjusted vertically using the buttons on the top. The module can also be angled using the thumb screw that connects the bracket to the stand. The stand also has a clip for securing the power and USB cables going to and from the module. The base plate has a section in the work area that's secured with a couple of clips on the bottom side that allow it to be removed for various engraving tasks and snap back into place when needed. The laser module incorporates a 10 watt diode laser and a 2 watt infrared laser so you can cut and engrave a wider range of materials with this one machine. The diode laser is best for engraving and cutting things like wood, black acrylic, leather, paper, and coloring stainless steel, while the infrared laser can etch and mark almost any metal or plastic material. The module has all the ports needed for attaching multiple accessories and a PC, and is fan cooled with a magnetic fan cover for easy cleaning. It also has a touch screen on the top that provides information like which laser you're using, the job progress, your file history, and it allows you to select which laser you want to use by swiping back and forth on the screen. It also has an emergency stop switch in the handle so that you can stop the engraver quickly if there's ever a problem. The safety cover is designed to offer protection against the laser and has a fan built into it to exhaust any smoke that's generated while the engraver is working. It has neodymium magnets embedded in the top so the cover can be quickly attached or detached from the module. The fan has a USB cable that plugs into the output port in the module. The module also connects to the electric stand, rotary, and slide extension with USB cables and to the power adapter. The normal working area for the engraver is 160 by 120 millimeters, but the slide extension expands it to 160 by 300 millimeters. The chuck rotary allows you to engrave round objects like tumblers, thermoses, mugs, and rings. The kit comes with a tailstock that supports the end of long or delicate items like wine glasses, and various jaw attachments are also included for the chuck. These fixtures can be secured to the base plate using the brass thumb screws and will serve as stop blocks for accurately positioning your workpiece when you're doing multiples of the same thing. However, the slide extension provides a very convenient batch engraving feature, which I'll show later in the video. So I'm going to leave the fixtures off for now and use the cutting platform for my first test instead, which will be engraving and cutting my logo out of this piece of 3.2mm birch plywood.
After turning the engraver on, I checked that the touchscreen worked and started setting the focal point using a ruler and the buttons on the stand to lower the laser module. The focal point can be set by either using this ruler to set the bottom of the lens on the module 150mm from the top of your work surface, or by using the laser dots during preview mode, which I'll show in a moment. I then connected it to my PC and opened LaserPecker's Design Space software to set it up. Once the software opened, I clicked the Connect Device button in the top right of the page to connect the engraver with the program. After it was connected, I imported my logo, resized it, and drew an outline for cutting. Then on the right of the page, I selected the diode laser and set the material, resolution, power, and depth parameters before entering preview mode. Once in preview mode, the module will output a blue perimeter onto the workpiece that indicates the boundaries of the work that's going to be done so that you can position the workpiece accordingly, as well as two red dots for setting the focal point, which is done by raising or lowering the module until the two dots converge into one. Once the focal point and workpiece was set, I clicked next in the program to confirm, then transfer the file to the module and start engraving. The process and elapsed time are then displayed on the touchscreen. I'm using the engraver without any safety cover for the sake of the video because it's easier for you folks to see how the laser works, but I took precautions for my safety behind the camera because it will scatter a lot of light with the module being so far away from the workpiece. I recommend always using the safety cover when you can instead of just relying on the safety goggles. The diode laser seems to do a nice job working wood, so I'm going to try engraving a 3D image in 8K onto another piece of birch plywood. This turned out really nice. It produced a lot of detail, but engraved deep in the dark areas to give it a 3D look without leaving any surface burn in the lighter areas. Next, I wanted to test how the engraver automatically switches between the two different lasers during a job, so I set up the same logo file to use the infrared laser to etch the logo into a piece of black acrylic, and then switch to the diode laser to cut the outline. Instead of cutting into the surface, the lower power infrared laser will actually produce a raised texture and brightly colored finish that won't overheat the thin plastic and distort it like the higher power diode laser could as it removes material. The module switched between lasers without any problems. I could have set the cutting power a little higher, but overall the logo turned out good. Next, I tried engraving a few stones for my yard with the diode laser. I don't know what types they are, I'm sure there's a geologist out there who can answer that question, but I do know that different stones will produce different results when you are engraving them. Some will turn out almost black, like the one I'm doing now, and others will be bright white or somewhere in between, like the other samples that I show.
The second stone is wedge shaped and I chose it specifically to show how the laser can engrave on an angle. You need to take some extra time to make sure the angle of the module matches the angle of the workpiece so that the focus distance is consistent for the laser, otherwise it'll engrave deeper on one end than the other and produce a gradient in the color as you're about to see because I was in a bit too much of a hurry when setting this one up. But it still looks good, kind of like an ancient hieroglyph. The next stone also produced a bright white engraving which really stands out against the rusty brown surface. Next I wanted to try something more delicate and detailed with the diode laser so I etched a high resolution cougar into a piece of scratch paper. I think my power setting was a bit too high, but it's showing a lot of detail regardless. I really like how high resolution images contrast on coated aluminum, so I painted a sheet of aluminum black and etched the same cougar in 8K using the diode laser, which turned out really nice. Because diode lasers can't etch bare aluminum, it only removes the paint so that the aluminum shines through. But of course the infrared laser has no problem etching bare aluminum or any other metal from steel to gold and silver. So then I used it to etch some aluminum business cards, anodized chrome and steel dog tags, and even a copper bar. The diode laser can also be used on other organic materials like leather and even food. After seeing what each laser can do, I decided to set up the slide extension to try engraving Led Zeppelin's logo into the back of my ukulele. The slide extension needs to be enabled in the program first by clicking on the device settings in the top right of the page and then toggling the slider switch on. The neck of the ukulele is heavier than the body, so I taped some roller bearings to it to balance it out and keep it from rolling off the platform. The slider extension is able to expand the work area depth to 300mm by serving as a conveyor that moves the workpiece back and forth as the laser works.
Next, I wanted to try batch engraving, so I entered the device settings in the program again and enabled multi-file engraving, then set up some text to engrave into eight wooden spice jar tags and entered preview mode. When batch engraving, the preview mode allows you to select each element that's to be engraved individually. So in my case, I selected one text at a time in the program, and the module would output a blue perimeter line for each text so that I could place the wooden tags accordingly to how the text is laid out in the program without any guesswork. Once the tags are placed and the engraving is started, the laser will engrave each tag one at a time without the need for me to engage it. Finally, I wanted to see how well the chuck rotary works, so I set that up the same way that I set up the slide extension so that I could etch my logo into a stainless steel water bottle using the infrared laser. Once again, this machine didn't disappoint. I really like how this turned out. So that's it for this video, folks. Overall, I have to say this is one of my favorite engraving machines. If you watched my review on the Laser Packer 3, then you probably already know how versatile these machines are with their portable compact designs, but incorporating two different lasers into one module has really taken the Laser Packer brand to the next level to offer loads of possibilities that no other machine can. It's easy to set up, easy to use, and produces amazing results. I would recommend it to anyone. If you're interested, you can get one for yourself at the links in the video description or pinned comment below. If you enjoyed this video, let me know with a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe because in the next video I'm going to be comparing the differences between the Laser Packer 4, the Laser Packer 3, and the Laser Packer 2 engravers. Until then, take care folks.